Good morning, GTS Retail Partners, and welcome to our Wednesday edition of the GTS Retailer to Publisher webinar. We're very pleased today to have uh, Chessex as our guest. Uh, Don Rents is the founder of Chessex Manufacturing, and he's going to be telling us about some of the new and upcoming products that they've got available through GTS. Uh, most importantly, of course, the Lab Dice 4 release that happens this week. Uh, so what I want to do now is just kind of walk you quickly through um, the, the process here for Zoom. If you're not familiar with Zoom, you can hover your mouse over your screen and you'll get a, a series of options down at the bottom. If you have a question or you would like to uh, interact with our guest today, you can click on that chat button and that'll open up a chat window off to the right hand side of your screen if you're on a computer. And uh, there is an option down there to send your message to either all panelists, which is Don and myself, or you can send it to all panelists and attendees, in which case everyone would be able to see it, um, attendees and um, hosts alike. So that's how that works. You can go ahead and tailor your message to the audience that you want to see the message. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Scott Bohr. I'm your category manager for gaming specialty products, which includes uh, miniatures games, role-playing games, and gaming accessories like dice and all the fun stuff that goes along with enhancing your gaming experience. So without, uh, without too much further ado, I do wanna go ahead and hand over the virtual microphone to Mr. Don Rents of Chessex Manufacturing. Well, thank you, Scott, for the introduction and your impression, your very good impression of Steve Martin with, with the Chessex logo going through your head. But anyways, um, first of all, I, I, I did want to state that, you know, in this pandemic period, first of all, I hope that everyone's staying um, healthy and safe and, and whatnot. But also, too, I just want to make a comment that, um, that I've always been impressed about the resiliency of our industry and the people who are involved. So this is obviously a very trying times, but you know, everyone, I just get the feeling that everyone is just so much, just loves the industry that they're willing to do what's necessary to get through these, these trying times. Um, and so I just wanted to give a shout out to everyone to, to thank everyone for all their efforts because it's not, you know, these are, these are not easy times um, and such. So, but we'll get through it and then, you know, we can, we can game on more and more in the future. So um, it's just like, you know, I've been in this field now for like 40, almost 41 years, 40 years since I started Games at Berkeley um, on June 5th, 1980. And that's what's always been impressing about the industry that no matter what happens, it seems to keep on going. Um, and I think I just want to thank everyone for, for all their efforts and such. Um, so from, from, our, uh, from our standpoint during the pandemic period, the factories remained operational. Um, they were in, in uh, Germany and Denmark and um, they have they had closures, but for retail stores only. For manufacturing that's considered essential, they're allowed to continue. And there, even though I wish the, the pandemic, pandemic never never happened, there have been some benefits for us. Um, one is that the slowdown of um, the the sales has allowed the factories to somewhat get caught up on their production. Um, in the past, we've been doing a lot of air freighting of like like a D4 for a color or this or that to keep everything on, on the shelves. Um, since we slowed down the sales and they were still producing, we've been able to catch up a bit. And this has given us the benefit that it's, it's allowing them to make some new product that they didn't really have the chance to make before. Um, the other benefit is that um, during, the, during the, the, the closure, we were able to focus on our web page and finally get the new web page up, which has a lot more accurate information than we had before, plus also a lot, of, lot, you know, a lot more, many more pictures. Now it's still a work in progress and we still have a lot of work to get done on it, but it certainly is better than the one that we hadn't touched since 2012. Um, so it's nice to get to join into at least the um, 20th century and maybe someday on a web page we'll get into the 21st century. Um, um, the only thing I should mention is that we did get a PPP loan and that allowed us to be able to um, continue um, during the six to seven weeks that were closed down to keep them all on, on payroll. Um, so, so none of our staff had to go on unemployment. So that when we were opened up again, everyone came back and we were able to like basically hit the ground running. Um, so that is also very helpful because, you know, even, in, even though we're just doing dice and they're just, um, you know, they're small bits, there's a lot of procedures that take a long time for people to learn. And every corporation or every company has a, uh, um, you might say, a, you know, a, 
um, you know, in, in a corporate intelligence and where people know this, where people know that. If they have to train too many people at one time, that kind of falls apart and then start giving poorer service. We were we did not have to do that. So when we came back in, you know, we're we're in good shape and um, and we're actually back to being profitable again. So it looks like we're going to survive and we're still going to give. I, I think Scott will attest to this. We're, we're giving very high fill ratios on our orders. So we have plenty of stock. And, uh, um, and I know that during this period that the sales for DICE have, have slumped a bit, mainly because DICE are an impulse buy. And when people are not coming to stores or playing with their friends, it's kind of like an out of sight, out of mind thing. But I do believe that from the um, indications I have is that games are still selling very well, uh, maybe even a little better. And that coming out of the pandemic, when people can start coming back to stores, there could be this whole new wave of people who are who are, who don't know all the all the joys of collecting dice. So I'm hoping that um, there'll be a little bit of a surge when the pandemic's over. Um, it won't make up for the loss, but at least at the time it, it, it will help help out. Um, so um, so I guess going on the next thing, the top would be like the lab dice. So the, the lab dice will be start ship from from your 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 friendly um, distributors on on Monday. Uh, and so it should be start showing up. And there's not really much to say about the, the, the colors um, other than I did want to mention something about the, the two heavy dice, uh, which are, you know, these two. Um, and I, I mean, even though they're like opaque um, in, in color, I think they're really, really cool. I mean, again, this is all started when we did the, uh, the faux metal dice, but the faux metal dice just the, the 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 metal plating just came off much easier than I was 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 hoping for, so that kind of didn't work. And the, the the base material color for the for the um, for the heavy dice is not that um, good looking. So it's really kind of hard color to mix with other colors and get something that looks good. Uh, but we came up with these colors. I was I would say disappointed because it's not really a disappointment. It's just the way it is. Um, but in the samples I had, there was a little more marbling in it. Um, so it was kind of like a half, half opaque. But even the way they, that they are, these are very unique colors. And I think that when, once people realize, oh, they kind of feel like metal dice, but they're not metal dice, and they're the same price as their normal dice, I think they'll, they'll actually be, be very, very popular. Um, if, you show, if you show the next screen with the, with the glow in the dark, um, so you have three of them that are glow in the dark, which are the, uh, um, which are the uh, um, supernova, the, the clear pink, and then the um, nebula um, uh, copper matrix. Uh, a special note on the uh, um, on the uh, um, uh, the supernova. It's called supernova because it's really amazing the glow in the dark effect. It's like something about the color that's in there, like literally, I don't know, like enhances the glow in the dark effect, and it actually kind of changes the glow in the dark effect. To be more of an orange than, than its usual kind of like a, its greenish color, so I think that, again that's also very nice. So I'm very pleased with with really all the colors. Um, the uh, we we did a, a a black white Gemini a long time ago, but it was more of a pearlescent, and we couldn't get the the good definitions on the uh, um, um, on the colors between the black and white with that pearlescent material. So we're redoing it, and we thought about doing it in red the first time like the first time, but you know, we, we started looking at it and said, you know, the pink actually looks pretty good. So that's why I went with pink. Um, so going on to the next topic, which are the Borealis dice. Uh, we announced in last week's scoop that, um, that the, the, the factory had tr trouble getting the uh, um, Borealis material from, from, from their maker. The way, the way dice are made um, is that they have factories that make colors um, and then they give it to the factory that makes the dice and then the, the factory make, uh, the, that makes the dice mixes the colors to get the colors and the effects of the plastics. Um, so the, 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 the company that, was make, that makes the, the colors was having trouble making the, the, the colors. I don't know if it was COVID related or not. It may, it may well have been. Um, also too, this material is not used by a lot of their customers. Um, so they what the what the the color maker does is they wait for the orders get to get to a certain level and then they make the material for it for everyone so in other words it's like a back order system and it could be very well that the the, the factory that makes a dice place their order just after they had made some and they need a while some some time to um get um 
um, enough back to, 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 to make more. Um, and so I don't really know the whole story. And of course, the, the company that makes the, the, the material, they'll never admit to, you know, to, to what really happened. So, um, uh, and the other thing that, that happens is that when um, companies make colors, um, I, I found this out when we used to make, um, uh, when we used to make uh, paints, was that even though they claim it's the same color, there's quite often a slight difference. Um, usually the slight difference didn't make it, doesn't make any difference, but sometimes it does. Um, and we were constantly having to change our formulas to make the paints, um, to keep the color, the final color be the same. So I don't in, anticipate this um, happening with, with, the, um, with the Borealis dice, but, um, um, but this um, disruption of getting the material has caused us to get really low or run out of some things. And I know that the factory's gotten the material I don't think they've started making the dice yet, but they're in in the process. Um, so you know they'll, they'll still be, soon be making it. So it's like that that they should be the same colors. Um, they should be the same colors, and but but they, but you never really know. And because there's been a, a collectible market for the Borealis colors, which you know, I, as as the person who who designs the colors, I think it's great that people actually. Um, you know, view what, you, what you're making as something that's worthwhile collecting. Um, but um, when we change the colors from the original material to the replacement material, because the original material is no longer being sold, there were some slight variations in the colors. And there was this very large uh, discussion on, online, such about OG, you know, the, um, versus the, the new colors and such. So add to that, over the time, the stock numbers for all the Borealis has kind of got throughout the range, and um, and um, and I, I, li I always like to have the, the stock numbers for the certain colors to be kind of close to each other, in, like in groups. So with all these things com combined, we decided to go ahead and change the stock numbers for this production runs for for all of the um, the ones that were getting more material, um, and so. So we'll be having new stock numbers. They're, they're going to be the 27, 5, I think the 80s or 70s or something. But anyways, so they'll, they'll have new stock numbers when this come out, comes out, come out. Now, I, I don't anticipate there being any color difference. Um, but just in a lot of chance that there might be this way, people will know, oh, this is from that production and this is from this production. So it was kind of like one of those things where, um, on the one hand, I kind of hate to burn the stock numbers. But on the other hand, I kind of like the uh, opportunity to be able to condense everything into a, a into a, a, a smaller smaller number groups. Um, so um, so that's the reason for the for the change. Um, then the uh, um, so um, the other thing is that there are two two numbers are not changing. Uh, one of them is smoke because the smoke we have probably oh gosh we have many months supply um, and. We're, we're changing that color and we're going to do like a new uh, new smoke, which is going to be a lighter smoke, which I think is a lot better looking. Um, it'll be more in the vein of the, the purple or the sky blue where you can see a little more, you know, into it. I always thought the smoke was a little dark. Um, so that one we're not changing because it's going to eventually be discontinued. Um, on the maple green, we're also not changing that number because even though we have many years supply, um, the material that makes the maple green, we cannot get anymore. Um, what happened was that when the, 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 the dice factory in Germany that makes the dice was sold, um, when they're going through their inventory, they found a bunch of that maple material, uh, the Borealis maple material. It was only really used in confetti, um, but we can't get the other colors in, of confetti, so we can't make it anymore. Um, so, it, so it has material, but this, this maple green was a pretty nice color. Um, so we decided to use all that material for maple green. And since this is a color that once we run out, we run out, um, we decided not to change that stock number. So those two numbers won't change, um, but all the other ones will. Um, you know, but, but don't go out and try to like, you know, hoard on the, on the maple green, because believe me, um, um, we have years supply um, because the, that Borealis material is a very small percentage is, is in there. So we have a lot. Um, so anyways, um, um, then the um, other, no, right, the last thing is that uh, we, there will be one new color, besides the, 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 new, the new light smoke, there will be one new color in October that um, I don't have the final production pieces in yet, 
Um, but we'll be making an announcement about you know closer to the to the time, probably like about three or four weeks before it's actually going to be released as far as the, the color and the stock number. Um, so um, I think it covers it about um, Borealis. So the next screen. Okay, so the future on the future releases. Um, again, I, I mentioned that because of the of the slowdown, the fact is able to start to make some 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 headway on uh, on new dice. I've always had the policy that if we can't keep the existing colors in stock, we're not going to bring out any new colors. Um, I mean, it's it's something that it's people well as a retailer and a distributor in, in the past. Um, I found it be very annoying when the, when the publisher ran out of a product. And I would much rather have had them keep the existing things in stock than go out and using that money or capacity or whatever to produce a new thing that is going to cause other things to run out of stock. Um, so um, that's been my policy. And that's why during like 2015 to 2018, we didn't come out with any new colors. Um, but because they've been able to get caught up on their normal production, it's allowed to give them some capacity to uh, make new colors. So um, the, 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 the one release is going to be Nebula, and other the Nebula is going to be four uh, Nebulas that were done before, which were uh, Nocturnal, Oceanic, uh, the Red, and the Wisteria. Plus, we're going to do a new version of Spring. Um, spring was not a bad color, but it was supposed to have more orange in it. Um, and this is one of the cases where Sometimes between the sample and the full production, the color changes. Um, and so we're going to do a spring, but do it with a little more orange, which I think makes it look a lot nicer uh, than, the, than the original. And then we can do a new color, but I'm not going to say, say what it is just yet. Um, on, the, on the Gemini colors, um, the, the problem there really is that they don't have enough machines. And um, anyway, I, I've had four great Gemini colors ready to go. Um, and there's and the, about maybe six or eight that are pretty good um, that I have to choose from. But I haven't been able to bring it. I mean, I had these things for like almost two years now, but I can't bring them out because they're, the Gemini machines um, are very, well, they're old. Actually, all their machines are old, but they have fewer Gemini machines than the other ones. And so they keep on breaking down. Um, so because Gemini sells well and they don't have that many machines, it's kind of hard for them to get um, a little ahead of, on the production, but they're getting pretty close. So I'm hoping that maybe later this year or earlier next year, we'll have a Gemini release. Um, so, um, and then after that, after you know, the Nebula, we're going to start working on, on, on um, new lab dice. It's a little, it's a little tough because I travel to the factory and, and that's when I go over there to like mix colors and, you know, come up with new ideas and perfect ones that we think are pretty good and such. Not being able to travel over to Europe, um, has made it tough to actually, um, you know, design new colors. We can do it by by air freight back and forth, but it's kind of a much slower process. Um, so I we, I do have a lot of colors. I actually have one color that is a definite, um, but was, but there's like five more that have to be worked on. Um, so the next lab dice I'm thinking maybe maybe I don't know somewhere between January and June of next year. Let me put it that way, um, because you, you never know. Um, what the production capacity is. So I don't want to, you know, uh, say something definitive um, and, uh, um, and not be able to, you know, come through it. Because I've done many times in the past where I said, well, oh, it's going to be this time. And then all of a sudden it's like five months later. So that's one of the reasons why I don't really make, an, why we don't really make announcements about um, uh, new dice that far in advance is because this way we can be much more accurate on when the, the dice are actually released. Even on this lab dice, we were off by one week because the, uh, the C shipment that came in that had the dice on, on it was delayed enough to where we couldn't, we had to delay it a week um, and such. The other thing I want to mention is on the 34 millimeter D20. Um, our stock levels of those have not been great lately. And there's a couple, couple of reasons for it. The, the, the first reason is, is that the mold got damaged because the machine had a problem and it got dented and it was probably making about, I would say like a half to two thirds of the dice were coming out uh, bad. Um, and the, with, with like a, a line that was filling with paint. So, so, yeah, so, so that event, the mold eventually got fixed. And then the machine itself is having a problem because it's not, um, it needs a lot of pressure to be able to get everything, um, um, you know, in molded cr correctly. So if you ever get a die where it seems like one corner 
is, is a little whitish on the end, that's, the, the, that's a pressure problem because it needs to have full pressure to be able to, to mold it properly. If there's not enough pressure, then it doesn't get everything molded in the, in, in, in the point, in, in all the points. Um, so, so if you ever see that, that's, that's what's happening there. So they think they fixed it. Then, then on top of that, um, the factories were, was required to change their painting from um, an oil-based paint, which they've been using since about 1950 something, to a water-based paint due to uh, environmental, environmental concerns and such. So I had to, had to relearn how to paint uh, with water-based paint. And the, the, the material, the, the urea material, is very good for many things. Um, it has very nice flat surfaces, it's very hard, it's very dense, but it's also very, um, and also things do not stick to it, um, which is really good if you're talking about medical or other things, um, or something that you want to clean, but it's not good for paint if you want it to stick. Um, so it took a while for them to learn how to do paint, and we, we got a shipment in, but I would say half of them had, um, um, had, had mi the, the missing underline underneath the six and the nine. So we had to send them back to get repainted and such. So, uh, so I think they got it fixed now. And uh, we, we, we got some dice, the, the last dice we needed on the speckle to be able to get the 29956 back in the stock. Um, and I think that we'll get more in fairly soon of that one die and then we'll be back up to full snuff. On the opaque, he's, the, the factory is having a, a weird problem in that the opaque material is getting a look, some, some like, I don't know, some imperfections. So it looks like it's kind of like, I won't say dirty, but it's more like it's dusty. Like there's, a, there, like there's some like dust particles on the, on the surface. And, he's, and the factory's not sure why this is happening. Um, and they think it might be a pressure related thing, um, but we're getting a lot that, w that way. So we kind of took them off the market. We may come back out in the future sometime with a, a dusty or, you know, something like that at a sale price um, because we have a lot of these dice and, and they're perfectly functional. They're just not as good as they normally are. Um, so if you're trying to order the opaque 34 millimeter D20s, we, we have some in stock, like maybe three or four colors, but not a lot. Um, so, so don't complain to your distributor that he's not doing his job and keeping on the shelves. Um, it's just a, it's an issue with, with the factories having tr trouble getting, getting the, the dice made um, correctly um, and such. So um, I guess lastly, I um, just want to thank everyone again for all their orders to, to keep us going. Um, I hope that we're doing a good job for everyone. So that's about it. Great. Yeah, sometimes it's, uh, it's a matter of taking a perceived defect and turning it into a feature, right? So then you just reissue that 34 millimeter as a as a dusty version. Yeah, the only problem with that is that we have dusty green and dusty blue and and colors, so it's kind of it used to be a dusty dusty blue. <laughs> so, if those were the colors that were affected, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. Uh, great information uh, about production and the upcoming new colors. We've got a a, a new. Uh, Borealis to look forward to, and it sounds like potentially a new Gemini coming out next year, and um, and then increased production on on some of the other the other products that people have been looking for. It has been it has been a difficult run the last few months just because of nobody's you know reduced in, uh, reduced attendance in stores and those reduced impulse buys. But you still have some of the collector market. And one of the things I did want to just remind everybody about is that the lab dies that come in the tubes will include an extra uh, bonus die. I don't think we, I don't think they really touched too much on that, but there's an additional die that's in the, in those tubes, bringing it up to an eight count. If you, uh, if you, if you put the screen to me, I can put one up in front of my camera. Yeah, it should be showing you. Go ahead and, okay. and, and talk. That and the, the whoops. Lab dice on the back side. Well, no, that's sorry, I got it right the first time. So, yeah, that was one of the that was one of the advantages of going to the tube um, was that it gives more space so people can actually see that that extra die. And also, too, just the fact that you know, lab dice test tubes it fits. I mean, it's kind of gimmicky, but you know, it's not a bad thing. You know, no, so not, not a bad thing. It increases the collectability while it's still in that lab dice format as opposed to when it goes into full production, if those colors make the cut and they get into full production, that eighth die won't be there. So 
you have from the collector side of things, there's a bit of a, ch a chase element to it. So, yeah, exactly. Because that was one of the reasons for for the the lab. I, I thank you for pointing out. I forgot to mention that that um, this way, the people who are true, you know, who really like to collect, will will have that die, and that will be another way of authenticating that theirs was a, the first production run. Great. Uh, we are starting to get a couple of comments here. So uh, Julio says he loves the gimmick. So there's a plus one for the gimmick uh, notion of it. And then the second one from Manuel says, are the tubes screw top or pop top? And as you've just shown, they're, they're screw top lids. They have a silver screw top as opposed to the, um, yeah. They, they also, they also can stand up on their end, although it's not particularly stable. Yeah, they stand up on the cap, right? You can, you can right. set them with the cap side down and that'll they'll stand up that way. So uh, retailers, if you have additional questions, please feel free to go ahead and put those into the chat window. If you're, if you're not familiar with Zoom, you can, you can scroll over your screen and that'll bring up the options down at the bottom. You just click on the chat and it'll come up here. Um, then Manuel said, excellent. My players all love screw tops and that's great. So it's plus one for the screw top lids. Any other? Any other questions, go ahead and, and pop those into the chat. Um, we've got Don, Don Rents here, who's a, a longtime member of the game industry. He's been through retail distribution and now manufacturing as well. So a lot of uh, big knowledge base and, and uh, interesting guy to talk to if you ever get the chance to pin him down at a convention and, and have a conversation with him, I highly recommend it. So, uh, so Dean says, I need like 10 opaque purple 34 millimeter D20s for a customer's wedding. Any chance they will be available soon? Oh, well, we can check. I mean, I, you know, I can check um, and get back with Scott um, to see what we have. We might be able to dig up 10 good ones out of the, out of the bags. What, what, what happens when we do the inspection is that we look, we get a bag and if like, you know, three quarters to 80% are like dusty, we don't even bother checking anymore because it's just, there's a point of diminishing returns, but we might be able to dig up 10. Um, so just a, just, just a standard purple with white as opposed to the, the light purple. Uh, let's see. Cool, thanks. Yes, Dean okay. says so. Let, uh, I'll look into that too and make sure that, and check our stock to see if we have those available. Let's see, that's the purple. Making notes. <laughs> Yeah, Dean, uh, if you if you can send me an email or send your sales rep an email to contact me, uh, then we can get that sorted out for you, Dean. My email address is my first initial S, last name B as in boy, O-O-R, at gtsdistribution.com. So uh, go ahead and send me an email. Um, and then, I, you know, I, I confess, I don't know exactly right off the top of my head, but um, does... Chessex have any international restrictions in terms of our ability to sell to Latin America or uh, other countries? No, no, no. Okay. I, I mean, I, we we have Chessex Europe, okay, but that's like a it's more like a franchise. It's a separate company that kind of handles a territory. Um, you know, I mean, the thing is that I know that that product leaks from the U.S. to Europe. I know that product leaks from Europe to the U.S. But you know, oh well. <laughs> You know, there's no, so, so, so there are no restrictions. Um, oh, I should also clear up saying that I was first a retailer, then I was a manufacturer, then I was a distributor. Uh, our, our second product um, was a thing called the Battle Mat back in 1981. So uh, next year is going to be the Battle Mat's 40th anniversary. That's awesome. That's really great. Um, Derek asks, how can we get the lab dice display in the background behind me. That's this one right here. Uh, and that is uh, in our inventory, it's CHX29977. And I, I did just put up the full list of the lab dice way for SKUs in the uh, comments so that you can, you can take a look at those as well. Yeah, the, it's all, I should also mention that it's also included in the, in the sampler. So if you buy the sampler, you not only get 18 dice sets, you also get that cardboard display that's over there. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I still remember uh, on, the, on the Mega Mat um, that um, 
the, the consternations that we had about making the mega mat because at that time the battle mat was eight dollars um and we looked at the mega mat and said oh um, my gosh it's gonna have to be eighteen dollars because we can't bring it out for any less than that and i said boy i know if anyone's gonna spend eighteen dollars for a gaming item and we 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 like wrung our hands time and time again but steve lucky at balboa um, um, um Hobby or Balboa game distributors or Balboa game kept on uh, pushing us to do it, so we finally did. And little we know that, oh yeah, I, I guess I guess they'll accept um, bigger mats at higher prices. <laughs> um, I was also mentioned too that um, we're we're getting the mono mats in pretty soon too, uh, so they'll be back and available once again, probably in the next let's say couple of weeks. Okay, great. That's good news. Yeah, I know that the battle mats are. And uh, all the different sizes are, are really good sellers, uh, really consistent. So that Mondomat is a, an enormous thing. Obviously, it sells a little bit slower than the others, but it's still consistent. Yeah, you know, I, I assume you said it's an enormous thing. You're, you're making a pun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so. All right. Excellent. Uh, any other questions from retailers while well, we have uh, Don here? Otherwise, uh, we'll go ahead and, and wrap things up and, and uh, return the rest of your day to you. Yeah, it looks like, okay. Actually, I could mention too that um, yeah. when people talk about displays, we remind people that we do have the small display that fits um, uh, like 18 polyhedral sets and then have the, uh, um, the large display that fits 28 sets um, also available for, for, for stores. Those, those fit the, uh, the more traditional Chessex box size, right. rather than the, the the tubes. If you if you want to display the tubes, your your primary go to is going to be that lab dice display. Yeah, um, it's right there off my shoulder. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Don. We really appreciate your your time here and being here. A uh, lot of great information on on the lab dice four release as well as some upcoming. Um, uh, Restocks, I guess, is the, the term that I'm looking for. Geez, it's early in the morning here, and I haven't had my coffee, so I apologize. Uh, but uh, restocks, as well as some uh, stuff that's been out of stock coming back in, so we're really glad about that. Uh, retailers, we want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be here. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself um, and, or your sales rep at GTS, and, and we'll happily take care of you and get, make sure your questions get answered. Um, Don, any, any final words? No, nothing other than, other than just to like thank everyone for um, you know toughing it out and carrying our product and you know um, you know you know keep on keeping on. I guess yeah. it's great product. Uh, I've enjoyed it you know in my entire uh, gaming career and, and my life here, and I'm I'm really pleased to be working with you directly and uh, and working with such a great partner that uh, GTS has in Chessex. So we're really thrilled about the partnership. Uh, we love the product and we we like. Uh, making sure that it gets out into the marketplace. So thank you very much for making such a great product. And once again, retailers, thank you for taking the time. We want to go ahead and return the rest of your day to you and have a great rest of your day. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.